Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to design and laser cut these big beautiful tokens and honor dials for Legend of the Five Rings. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my topic for today are these upgrades for Legend of the Five Rings living card game. I have these five large tokens. Uh, they're red on one side, they're blue on the other. And I have different methods that I tried and different materials before I settled on this approach here, so I'll talk about that. And also I'll talk about how to design and laser cut these honor dials. And all of these parts were designed on Adobe Illustrator, cut on a laser cutter, and then there is some assembly required, so I'll talk about all that in this episode. The hardest part of designing the tokens was getting the outside ring, and here's the method I used. First I found an image that I liked of uh, blossoms, and I turned that into an illustration by saying, image trace, make and expand. Then on another layer, I make a square and I put a circle on it and I say Pathfinder minus the front and I punch that circle out of the square. On a third layer, I create a circle with a diameter of the inside of the ring. So there's the ring when I put those two layers on together. So here's how I use these three layers to create the effect I want. First I select both uh, the pattern and the outer circle. I go to Pathfinder and I say Trim. And when I expand that layer now, I can see that I've got all the elements I want plus that outer piece, and I can just turn that off and I'm just left with the pattern inside that circle. Now I select that layer and the layer that has the smaller circle on it, and I basically do the same thing. I select them both together, I use Pathfinder, I say Trim, and it cuts out the middle. I expand it, and I get rid of the center, and I'm left with the ring. Now I create a new drawing that has, uh, the on one layer, it has the ring and it has the cut circle for the actual token. And then on different layers, I'll put the different interiors for the different five ring tokens. Each one of these layers are created by using the pen tool to draw lines and fill in shapes, and also by using circles and using the minus front technique to punch out the outline in the circle. The honor dial is two layers. The basic shape is made by selecting the polygon tool, and when you click on that, you have an option to tell it how many sides. So you say six sides, and it'll create it also. You can round the corners, as I've done here. I found some images of bamboo and dragonflies and used those for my design. On the top, I laid those out. I've got a cut line for the center hole, and I've got, of course, the outside, and then the diamond shape where the number is supposed to show up. The way I got the spacing right for the numbers on the bottom layer is by basically selecting the top layer and rotating it. Uh, digitally. So I'd say Object Transform Rotate, and I would rotate it 60 degrees, and it would uh, take it to the next space, and I'd put the number in there on the bottom layer. The new material I wanted to test for this project is called Microsurface Acrylic. It has a very thin layer of a different color on the top, so in this example it's red on white, and there's also metallics. This is brushed gold on black. This is what it looks like when the laser cutter is engraving red on white. I also purchased some white on red and I used a couple different brands so I could see how the different brands compare. I ended up preferring the Gemini Duet which is in the middle here. The pink residue comes off with alcohol so that's not a problem. I just really like the red from the Gemini Duet. After cutting these samples, I decided to make the outer circle a little bit bigger, and I went and changed that layer, so that changes for all the tokens. That's why you put those things on one layer, so you only have to change them in one place. Here I am cutting the blue side, and here's a full set of red and blue, and the plan is to fuse those together back to back. Here I am engraving the brushed gold uh, with a black back layer. This is the top of the dial and I use the red on white to do the bottom of the dial. 
Here are the parts, and on the right you see I also tested an ivory on dark brown, just uh, for comparison. You can see that there's smoke residue on all the pieces, and I use isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip to clean that off. Just use as little as possible on the metallics. I cut a black layer for the back of the dial, and I fused that together, and I put it under a weight. And then I decided that the best way to assemble them was using screw rivets. They come in two parts, you screw them together, and they come in black and brass. Things didn't go quite as smoothly for the tokens. I tried everything I knew about how to fuse things together. I weighted them down, I used clamps, I uh, put the fusing liquid on before, I put it on after they were clamped together. I found that the microsurface was very easy to damage if there was any leakage of the fusing liquid. And in the end, you always have that line because it's two different pieces. And I just didn't like the way that looked. So I went back to the laser cutter and used the method that I showed. I have a whole video on making the Arkham Horror Chaos tokens. You cut and engrave one side, you flip them over, and then you just do the engraving on the other side. You leave the paper on both sides, and this is what they look like. This is ivory acrylic, and then use acrylic paints to paint them. You peel the paper off when they're dry, and this is how they look. And I'll tell you, it was a lot of work to peel the paper off such a detailed design but the result was worth it. They're a little less vivid than the microsurface tokens, but that's because I used ivory instead of pure white acrylic, and of course they look much better from the side. I think this game has really lovely components, but I do like the flash of the metallic on the honor dial, and there's no comparing the weight and the feel of the acrylic tokens to the cardboard. I plan on airbrushing a coat of varnish over these so that they wear well, and I really love the way they turned out. I think the microsurface acrylic is a great solution for the dials. If you'd like to see more projects about upgrading your favorite games, please subscribe to my channel.